My name's DJ Vadim, producer, DJ extraordinaire. Oh, my name is Fox Adams. My, I'm jet lagged. I just got off the plane. Heathrow. I'm one third of the electric. I deem myself the other part of it. And then the lovely Sabre Day, who's not here right now, kisses the Sabre Day because she can't be here. But tomorrow we will see her and it will be excellent as the electric reforms. I, I started um, listening to hip hop around 84, 85. Um, Bought my first records, like 89, um, Stets of Sonic and Big Daddy Kane and KRS, BDP. Um, bought my turntables, my first turntables in 1989. Bought my sample in 1992. Put out my first record in 95. And ever since then, I haven't stopped doing any of that. Just kept making beats, DJing around the world and uh, having fun and on my travels in New York I met the amazing Pugsley Adams 2006 right yeah at CMJ um, and I didn't know at that meeting on that cold blustery day in New York yes, it was very chilly um, that four Scotch. years later we'd be here we were making a group the electric I got into hip hop around the same time, 84, 85, like I had a bunch of tapes and my cousin was like a huge LL Cool J fan and he was just like preach to me about how LL Cool J was like the illest ever and I was like no, he's cool but I like you know other people and then I really got into like EPMD and Karis One and De La Soul and then with Chicago artists like Common and Twister, I mean, it's Tom Twister, you know, those people really inspired me. But my, my uncles that married into my family were all from Jamaica. And they would make me make tapes for them from the radio. And, you know, to me, I really thought nothing of it. I was like, oh, you know, they give me five bucks if I record these songs. But they were training me to listen. And then my father, he was the DJ on radio. And I mean, every Sunday he would play me a bunch of different records, jazz records, blues records, soul records, like whatever he was into during that period of his life. And that was training me as well. And then um, I got really heavy into graffiti to a point it was a problem. But then I found rapping was a better outlet for me. And you know, from there I just kept going. Like I put out my first tape when I sold my uh, Sega Genesis. And then I kept putting out tapes and then I started being able to talk people into putting out my music. So I had vinyl, I had CDs, and then I met Vadim in 06. Were you ever a break dancer? <laughs> I, I tried breaking, it wasn't for me. Because I, I tried breaking yeah, it wasn't back for in me. the day it and it wasn't so good. Yeah. And, I, and I tried rapping yeah. and that definitely wasn't for me. See, DJing. I was like, yeah, I did. I, the, well, I didn't have the turntable, so that just totally took me closest, out of the game. The closest thing I got to was graffiti. Yeah. I tried that, but I got arrested, but I didn't. See, I got really good at graffiti, and I got arrested, but then I got like a job doing graffiti. So, I mean, it was kind of like a double-edged sword of uh, both things, like, ah, this isn't it. What about beatboxing? I was never good. I can actually beatbox now. If you want to be a beatboxer, you have to remember that you got to have that. Very good. You gotta have those sounds like that's that's the the key element. Everything else you can, you know, all day. It's moving. Baby's there, bent on the wall. Sport, sport, when the summer fall. Rich is what you're watching. The way way it usually works with working with Vadim is like he'll give you a skeleton of the beat. You won't know it's a skeleton of the beat. You write to that motherfucker like, this is it. Oh, it's, oh this is so cold. And then like, you know, you record your shit, then like he'll be like, all right, cool. Then the next day he gives you like this whole other part of the beat that you didn't know existed that was like iller. And you're like, man, if you'd have gave me that part of the beat, oh my God. But um, Life is Moving <laughs> was one of those records. And um, I wrote the, the lyrics and it was it was so funny because uh, my friend Max is here from Chicago right now and we were just watching TV here and he was tripping that the commercials are the same like they're asking you guys to give your gold up and you know they're asking you for payday loans and all that stuff same stuff we get in America and that song I was touching on those things because I was watching TV here like this is ridiculous this must mean everywhere else is going through these same you know kind of problems. 
So like, you know, I did the song and my name's like, you know, who do you want to get guest appearances from? And I was like, well, can we get Abstract Rule? Because that's how me and him first really gelled, was on the tour with me. Vadim, Astra Groove, and Y'all Bravo. So, you know, it's only right to, you know, keep the collective going. So, you know, we did the song, recorded it, and the hook was like, it is moving, are you tuned in, windows back to me, by And it was like one of those things that kind of just stuck out to me. Because I always feel like the music will tell you where you need to go. Like, you don't have to force it and come up with some super clever shit. Like, the music will tell you this is it. So, I mean, for me, off that, like, I felt that was really the strongest title from all the songs. I mean, we could have t titled it anything, and be, you know, people would have run with it, mm -hmm. but it, in reality, because we made the record on the road, you know, just traveling and touring and writing songs backstage and whatnot, and, you know, days off, the, it kind of feels apt that that's the title life is moving as we made it while our life was moving in in moving in the, in the sense that we were in a tour van a tour car airports yeah i mean the amazing thing about this album is that it's a crowd tested album and you don't really get that too often nowadays like a lot of artists are so studio and then they try to figure out how to perform later and with like all these songs are songs that we really performed live first and figured out if this is it, you know, it's a lot of songs that didn't really make the record, you know, but it's, it's a lot of songs that we did a sound check or like we get a remix beat and I'm like, well, just play the beat and let's just see how it sounds with sound check. And we're like, oh yeah, that's it, that's it. Or like Sabro just sing something random, you know, at the practice and we're like, let's go with that. So, I mean, a lot of the records were just on the spot, you know, and to me, I felt that really made it more of a hip hop kind of thing because it was a free thought thing, it was a freestyle thing, it was a not being too concerned thing. It's like, let it just go. Don't be so, ah, this is, you know, this is the way it's got to be. Mm. Do what fit, feels good, you know. But it was crazy because I had never met Sauber Jade ever in my life until we went on tour. So it was like maybe a day before the tour, my dean's like, she's coming over. And I'm like, hey, how you doing? I'm Pugs. And you recorded the track the same night. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, we, we went on. And you know, we did like maybe 20, 30 shows. And then we came back to London. And then, you know, we kind of talked about what's next. And I was, you know, I was with Vadim, I'm like, yo, we should, you know, kind of do a group. And he's like, yeah, we should try to do something. And Sabra was agreeing with that as well, that we should try to do it. And from there, it was all those songs. I mean, I'm a very rapperly person. He's a very producerly person. Mm -hmm. And those are two very strong personalities. And I feel like she kind of cuts through and brings like us butter. together a lot of times. Like butter on bread. Like a, like a knife. Like a knife. Cuts through. <laughs> But she definitely brings, I think she brings our worlds together a lot of times. And she definitely gives like a really good soul element. And on stage, I mean, just to see the people's faces when she hits those notes and, you know, really talks to them with her music. Because she's very personable with, you know, the things she writes. She's yeah. not like one of those people just to write whatever. Like it's very calculated when she decides to, to put it down. Right. Yeah. Yeah. www.electricsoundcompany.com Twitter Pugs Adams, Vadim, Facebook, either one of us, or Cyber J, we're all on there. Any any social network, the searches, yes. The electric, the electric. YouTube, everything. Yeah. Code. Emphasis. Code. Emphasis. Code. Emphasis. I need the code. Emphasis. Code. If you want all the good news about the music you love, code emphasis.